In that case, okay, so what about if I say NASA? Our guest today is Ricardo Teles from Barcelona, Spain. He's a ROS expert. He's the CEO and founder of The Construct, an online platform for learning ROS and robotics. He has a PhD in AI, and he's the author of four books on ROS. Ricardo, thank you very much for joining us today. <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you, Sina. Thank you. My pleasure. Sure. So can you tell us in simple words, what is ROS? Uh -huh. Yes, that's a very good question because it's not clear for the newcomers. So they, they don't know. So but what is ROS? Because ROS stands for Robot Operating System. But it is not an operating system. Uh, it's, it's actually is a framework that is put on top of the operating system. In any robot, you have a computer. And then mm -hmm. uh, let's say it's a Linux machine in, because it's a big uh, robot. Well, uh, even wheeled robots, they have a computer, even if it's a small. Then you install Linux there, and then you install ROS as a set of packages that you are adding to the Linux system. They are just a set of packages. Again, by installing this, you can create ROS-enabled programs. So ROS is, has revolutionized the, the field of programming robots because by having this framework, you can create programs for robots based on that framework. So actually at the end, you are programming for ROS, not for robots specifically. And what that in, uh, implies is that you can create programs that can be shared between different robots. So before ROS, if you have a robot with two wheels and you wanted to move it around a room, then you have to create a program for this robot and then you buy another robot, a different robot with uh, four wheels. And then you have to create another di different program for that robot also. So you cannot reuse the one that you created for the one, for the first one. How about, how about some of the libraries that are available in ROS? For example, let's say I'm trying to program a robot arm and mm -hmm. I need uh, uh, like a kinematic, robotics kinematics library. Is that also available in ROS? If, I, if I'm not programming inside ROS, then I have probably to develop everything from scratch, all of those rotation yes. metrics and everything. Exactly. But if I have ROS, it's already there. The library is already there. I can just easily use it, right? Correct. Exactly that. That you, you nail it. A very typical application for a robot, for a service robot, for a, an autonomous robot. So it has to be able to navigate. So for example, go to the kitchen, then the robot has to know how to drive the path to the kitchen and avoid the obstacles. Right. So this is already done. The algorithms for this, the Islam right. algorithms for creating maps, the common filters for doing localization of a robot, the path planning, algorithms, all that is being already made in ROS. Plan, so right? you can buy a robot now, if, even if with little knowledge, you can buy a robot now. Uh, well, and if you know ROS, if you know ROS, in half an hour, you have these robots moving around your home. That's the key feature that ROS provides. It has a lot of built-in libraries that you can just pick or use and integrate it into your workflow, into your robotics exactly. workflow. Exactly. My next question is who should learn ROS? Let's say I'm a, I want to become a robotics mechanical engineer where I will mm -hmm. design robots and uh, maybe like uh, come up with the idea, prototype it, uh, 3D model it, prototype it. Should I learn ROS as well or learning ROS will be more for people who want to become a robot programmer or robotics developer or robotics software engineer? Exactly, it's, it's the second case. So if you are going to be focused on, on the mechanical parts or even the electronic parts of the robot, then you don't need to learn ROS because ROS is more for building the behaviors of the robots. I see. Okay, so now that we know what ROS is, 
can you tell us how popular ROS is in the industry and maybe name some robotics companies who use ROS? Yes, um, in that case, okay. So what about if I say NASA as a company that is using uh, ROS? Last week, it, there were two big news about NASA. The first one that probably everybody knows, which is that they land the rover in, the, in Mars. Second new is that they announced in a different channel, they announced that they are putting ROS2 on the next rover that they are going to send to the moon. That's a way of saying how mature and how important is becoming ROS in the robotics world. By the way, they have put a, a, um, an employment offer on, on internet, looking for a ROS specialist to work on uh, at NASA for, for that project. So if anybody's interested, you can Google it. So that's, that's awesome. so important is becoming the ROS. I think, I think that it's going to become the standard for any robot. Still not, still is not, but it's becoming, it's becoming and, and, and yeah. So I don't see any other possible option that is going to take the, the lead that ROS is taking. Ricardo, you talked about the opportunities, job opportunities for ROS developers. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you elaborate a little more? Tell us about uh, how high is the demand for, for ROS developers and maybe give us some examples of job opportunities in Europe and in the United States and maybe Canada. Okay, so uh, at present demand for ROS developers is not so high as in other type of robotics engineers. And it is definitely increasing a lot. What I can tell you is that any conference that I go uh, about ROS, there is a main conference, which is called the ROSCon, which is the official yearly conference of ROS. But the, the important thing is that all the companies there, they were showing a big uh, sign saying, hey, hey, we are hiring. Those are companies based on ROS. Their products are based on ROS. Like, uh, I don't know, import, uh, famous companies on this uh, sector. Well, as I mentioned, is PAL Robotics is one of them. Then there is uh, Clear Path, which is a Canadian company. Fetch Robotics, also very famous. What I recommend to the, the audience, to your audience, is that they subscribe to one uh, email list, which is called Robotics Worldwide. They subscribe you will be starting to receive positions uh, for from around the world so the people is looking for uh, I don't know um, an engineer for this or even for doing PhDs doing for doing postdocs now at present um, there exists another version of ROS which is called ROS2 and this is the one that is becoming the the one uh, more adopted by the companies well is becoming i mean it's it has is is it starting is low yet so the 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 most used for products at present is ros1 yet is ros1 but the problem in ros1 is that it was thought for research for universities for testing this concept but it was not tested for the robustness required in most most of the uh, robotics applications in the real world that are dangerous. For example, uh, in, inside an autonomous car. So there are uh, several, um, several companies doing autonomous cars that they are using ROS2. And there is one company which is called Apex AI, which is a United States company that is dedicated to certify this ROS2 for autonomous cars. So you can put your ROS2 on the, on the autonomous car and be certified and then use all the software that already exists. I, I can tell you that I can feel this, this growing interest in more ROS developers and more ROS developers. And the good moment is now because it's like when the data science you, you know, data science, so oh, there were just a few guys doing data science. 
15 years ago, just a few guys. Now everybody now is, yeah. everyone is a data scientist. You, 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 you do like that, you look beneath the, the table and there are 10, 10 guys doing data science there. What are you doing there? So th there's too much competition. Now you can become a ROS expert now and the competition is not so big, but you had to take this seriously because now. Yeah, yeah. it has to be now, exactly. Yeah. So if you love to program robots, then you should learn ROS. But only if you love to program robots, if you don't like it, then don't do it. There is a lot of work on developing the hardware of the robots. Programming the robots is the final frontier for intelligent robots. The hardware is already there. It already exists, the hardware that allows a robot to clean a room completely. What it doesn't exist is the software that allows a robot to clean this room, for example. Well, you cannot see because it's the, behind the camera, but here is plenty of stuff. There is the hardware that can move around and grasp the things and so on, but there is not the software that can command a robot right. to clean this mess. It doesn't exist. But this is just to, to, to tell to your audience that uh, this is like the final point that we are missing. But in, this is in case that you don't know what to do, hardware, electronics, or software, maybe right. want to try it on the software. If you are clear, then go for it. Go for it. We, we need the better hardware. We need better electronics also right so you're basically saying if if you haven't decided yet in uh, in terms of whether you want to become a robotics mechanical or electrical engineer versus a robotics software engineer or rust developer mm -hmm. then the future the opportunity would be in the computer science and the algorithm and in the programming side of side of robotics mm -hmm. in right. the others also there are many opportunities because we need uh, things more efficient faster and better in reactions times, less consumption, and less heat. So many, many other problems. Uh, so Ricardo, you're the CEO and the founder of The Construct. Can you tell us a little more about The Construct, what it is, and how my audience can benefit from uh, your training mm -hmm. platform? Uh -huh. Yes. So um, I learned ROS using the official documentation of ROS which is very, very good. Well, it was very good at the time that it was released. But even like that, it was difficult for me to learn. And it has been difficult for all the people that have started to learn ROS because ROS is not simple. Then because of that, then I, um, I thought about providing a better way of learning, a faster way of learning ROS and it is based on a concept that is called constructivism, sorry, constructionism, uh, which is a concept uh, developed by Seymour Paper. And he developed this concept about uh, indicating that when you are learning uh, the most is when you are practicing, not when you are hearing, but instead when you are building something, this interaction with the system is what make us learn faster. Then based on that, we created the construct, which is a, an academy that we don't use videos to teach. We don't use that. What we use is a, a text, is like a textbook, which is on the screen, but you have on the side, you have a simulation of a robot. It's a physical simulation. And it's a simulation that if you push it, then it will fall and it can break and it can crash and all that. So it's a physical simulation of a robot. So the text is teaching you how to program the robot. Then you had to program inside the academy. You had to program and run it. Run it and see the result of your program in real time. And this, everything of that is included on a web browser. So you don't need to install anything then by doing this, we achieve to teach ROS a lot, a lot faster. We, we actually have a program, it's called ROS in five days, in five days, that you can, if you follow this program, it's, it uses different simulations with different robots. So you can see the concept in different ways, the same concept, 
and it has a project that you have to do it and everything in an environment which is on the web that provides you all what you need. And especially this quick interaction with the robot to see if uh, you, what you are doing is correct or not, because you are going to see the result on the robot. Right, right. So it's a great tool because uh, I know some of my audience, they cannot afford buying a robot, but they want to, to learn how to program a robot. Then your platform, your online training platform would be a great tool for them because it's very realistic. They can interact with the robot. They can program it. They can immediately see how the robot reacts to the program. Mm. And uh, it would be very beneficial, especially for people who cannot afford buying a pretty expensive robot. Yes, that's right. And also, let me uh, say also that we recently have included in December, we included a real robot lab. So even if the main lessons, they are done, on the simulation for each student. So each student has his own simulations based on the unit, on the progress and so on. But now we have included a remote robot lab. There on the other room that they have over there, then there is a lab with a Tartelbot 3 robot, which is available 24 hours, seven days of the week then the students, they are requested to connect remotely from their homes to that robot and do some of the programs. So they have to do, hey, you have to build this program, try on the simulation first. When this is running, then you put it on the real robot. And then remote. you try also here on the real robot. And then you see, you can see also an experiment with a real robot. How cool is that? Yeah, that's super cool. 